Now to continue our conversation on pro-life laws in the Sooner State, we're joined over Zoom by U.S. Representative Stephanie Bice of Oklahoma. Congresswoman, welcome to the show. First, Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a joy to have you. First, what is your reaction that your governor, Governor Stitt, recently signed nine pro-life bills into law in your state? You know, it's exciting to know that um, this state is continuing to do what we can to protect life. Uh, I served in the state legislature uh, in the Senate before elect being elected to Congress, and uh, I fought for those same issues um, while I served in that capacity and look forward to doing the same on the federal level. But uh, we live in a pro-life state, and the governor is continuing to support that um, very important work. As you mentioned, you previously served in the Oklahoma State Senate before being elected a U.S. representative. Can you speak more to why do state lawmakers matter when it comes to the pro-life cause? This is something you know firsthand. Absolutely. You know, there are ways, there are laws that you can put in place really to uh, not only protect life, uh, whether that be waiting periods or um, in some cases, you know, in Oklahoma, we uh, had a minor consent bill that was put into place. Uh, but also to support life, whether that is offering tax credits for foster and adoption um, services or making sure that families are supported. All of these things are pro-life issues, uh, and I'm proud that um, I was able to support so many of those causes. There have been a lot of pro-life successes at the state level this year, but turning to Capitol Hill, a historic number of pro-life women were elected to the U.S. House this congressional term, yourself included. But, Congresswoman, are your pro-life voices being heard? Can that contingency of solid pro-life women in the House make a difference in what legislation passes and which legislation doesn't? You know, um, it's an exciting time to be a conservative uh, woman in Congress right now. As you mentioned, uh, there are more women serving on the Republican side uh, than ever before. And we're really uh, pushing back on the pro-choice uh, narrative. And I think it's really um, come to light because of this most recent freshman class. I was incredibly honored to be elected freshman class president. I'm the first female ever to hold that role uh, for the Republican side. And um, we are all trying to ensure that uh, laws stay in place and that lives are protected, including the Hyde Amendment, mm -hmm. which has become a really, um, you know, sticking point for members of Congress right now. We continue to see um, the administration push for pro-choice initiatives, and I think it really is incumbent upon us to educate um, you know, our constituencies on why the pro-life issue is so incredibly important and how we're fighting back against um, the other side. Mm. Congresswoman, I understand you are Catholic. How does your faith shape your pro-life beliefs, and do you believe that life begins at conception? You know, it's incredibly important that we, um, you know, that I, uh, in my faith, uh, you know, stick to those values and hold on to that. And I, you know, from the very beginning, I'm actually a Catholic convert. Um, so I learned, I think, a lot about um, how the, the church sees life, whether it's conception or natural death. Um, and I'm proud to support um, the, the policies that we're fighting for uh, in Congress. It's so good to have you in the church. We have about a minute left, Congresswoman, but I'd love to ask you about this. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, also a Catholic, is now calling for a vote on the Women's Health Protection Act, which would expand abortion on demand. How would you vote on that piece of legislation? Well, that's an easy one. I would vote no, uh, as would uh, so many of my colleagues, if not all of them. And I actually think that you have a lot of uh, moderate uh, Democrats on the other side that are really pushing back on uh, the radical pro-choice narrative that uh, the left keeps pushing. Look, uh, the Roe versus Wade was a very sort of narrow ruling, and, I, and I'm happy to see that states like Mississippi and Texas, certainly, and others are really trying to force this issue to the forefront again and reevaluate uh, what it means to um, offer uh, pro-life initiatives mm -hmm. or be pro-choice. That's a, a real important conversation that needs to happen sooner rather than later. If we're going to continue to support uh, life, we need to have that protection on the federal level, too. Well, thank you so much for your leadership and for your time. Representative Stephanie Bice of Oklahoma, thank you. Thank you. We are now joined on Skype by Sue Liebel, State Policy Director for the Susan B. Anthony List. Sue, welcome back. As you heard earlier, Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt held a ceremonial bill signing to celebrate the nine pro-life bills he signed into law this year so far. I know Susan B. Anthony List President Marjorie Dannenfelser was present for, there, for that occasion. 
So how significant is this to have nine new laws? It's bold, isn't it? Uh, Governor Stitt is at the forefront of really a national momentum to challenge the status quo and modernize our extreme abortion laws. Across the nation, pro-life governors are taking bold action to ensure that state laws reflect the will of their constituents and the clear science that today shows the humanity of unborn children. Mm. Um, as the radical Democrats in Washington push abortion on demand, paid by our tax dollars, and they want to expand those dangerous abortion drugs. Now, strong pro-life leaders in the state houses are critically important, and they're stepping up like never before. Out of these nine new laws, are there specific ones that you would like to draw attention to for our viewers? Yeah, yeah they're all strong, but I'd like to uh, point out they included a heartbeat bill. Mm -hmm. We've heard a lot about the Texas heartbeat bill, but uh, Governor Stitt just signed a heartbeat bill, too. Um, also, um, a prohibition for Oklahoma that would prohibit abortion if and when Roe versus Wade is overturned. It's very strategic, actually, right now, in anticipation of the U.S. Supreme Court's upcoming uh, review of the Mississippi law, the Dobbs case, which could have the potential of overturning or severely restricting Roe. So here, Governor Stitt's getting ahead of that and prohibiting abortion uh, for his state. And then there were two other bills that also were very strategic to get ahead of President Biden's radical attempts to expand abortion, this time through the Food and Drug Administration. We're expecting that the FDA will roll back the health and safety standards on the dangerous chemical mm -hmm. abortion pills. And so Governor Stitt's two bills were signed to implement um, strong restrictions and um, safety protocols in the state of Oklahoma. So important. And what's probably no surprise, pro-abortion groups have filed a lawsuit against the state in an effort to overturn five of the nine pro-life bills. So what should viewers expect? Do you think we will see Oklahoma be able to enact a heartbeat law? Well, I'll tell you, this is not surprising, um, as these, these laws really bite into a huge chunk of the abortion industry's profits. The Supreme Court has, in the past, allowed states to regulate abortion to various degrees. So they likely will not win on all those suits uh, or against all those bills. But the Mississippi um, Dobbs case that I mentioned earlier will have a profound effect on the heartbeat bill, uh, for example, and also that prohibition. So we're going to want to watch that later this year, early next year, um, at the national level to see what the U.S. Supreme Court's going to do. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if these cases, you know, linger until that is decided. That's such a good point. Sue, we have about a minute left, but while I have you, what does all this reveal about the important role of pro-life governors right now? You know, that can't be overstated right now. And, and actually, they're stepping up. So far this year, there have been almost 500 um, pro-life bills advanced in state legislatures. And as of um, June 1st, um, about 90 of them have been signed into law. Nearly one in five of the pro-life bills that were advanced have been enacted into law. And that's not just, you know, Governor Stitt, uh, Texas Governor Abbott, uh, Montana Governor Greg Gianforte, South Dakota Dakota Governor Nome, heck, McMaster, South Carolina, Kemp, Georgia. I could go on. Mm -hmm. And actually, we, see, we could expect this to heat up even more and watch uh, the radical abortion lobby push back very hard, because Obviously, Roe versus Wade is not settled. Hmm. Uh, the states are boldly reacting because it's not workable. And as it gets more radical on the Democrat side and in Washington, the states are stepping up like never before. Absolutely. Great insight, as always. Sue Liebel with the Susan B. Anthony List. Thanks for your time. Thank you.